so in this video we're going to go over titration for our YBCO high temperature superconductor lab. This is an ideometric titration which it means uh, against iodine uh, or diiodide. Um, so this is different than the acid base titrations you might have learned in uh, basic chemistry. Uh, so we'll go over how we do this and what it gives us uh, for this lab. Uh, but first I want to go through the equipment and materials that we're going to need to do this. Uh, so you'll see I'm in front of a fume hood. Um, so we're going to use a fume hood uh, mostly because of the ceramic powder. It's a very fine powder um, and if it aerosolizes we don't want to uh, uh, breathe it in. Um, but everything else uh, is solution based uh, and so it would be safe to do elsewhere but it's better for us just to contain everything in the fume hood. So we've got our centered YBCO uh, powder and so to do that uh, we have to take one of our YPCO pellets that's been centered and crush it in a mortar and pestle and grind it uh, and then pass it through a 325 sieve uh, like we've done before. So I'm not going to show that in this video, uh, but just keep in mind that the powder is uh, ground uh, in a mortar and pestle and sieved to 325, so we know it's a fine powder. So we've got our powder, um, and then we also need a balance, so I'm also here uh, in front of a balance so that we can weigh out the, the appropriate amount of mass of the powder. Um, and then we have our sort of pre-made solutions for us. Uh, so Nancy uh, takes care of all this for us. Uh, there's um, uh, nice pictures uh, in the share drive to kind of go over and document the solution making process. So uh, obviously uh, I thank her for doing all that for me. Uh, but what we need uh, for this process, uh, the first thing we need is a source of iodide. So we have uh, potassium iodide here, uh, and this in particular is uh, a 10 weight percent solution of potassium iodide, or Ki. Uh, so we have that. Uh, we also have a 3.5 uh, molar uh, HCl, or hydrochloric acid, solution uh, that's been pre-made. And we also have a 0 0.03 molar or normal uh, solution of sodium thiosulfate. So those are back there. I'm not going to touch them right now. You'll see them further uh, in the video. So we have all of those. In addition, we have a starch solution. Uh, this is actually just, uh, uh, for the most part, it's, it's cornstarch uh, in uh, a solution. And so it's actually a pre-made solution. It's a 0.5 weight percent uh, starch uh, indicator solution. Uh, so we have that as well. Uh, equi other equipment that we're going to need uh, to, to go with that. We have some uh, plastic uh, droplets, droppers, transfer pipettes. Uh, we have a glass stir rod. Um, we've got multiple beakers uh, for measuring things out and waste containers. Um, and then we also need a burette, which is, uh, it's a little bright here. Maybe I can turn off the light for a second so you can see it. Uh, and you'll see a, a closer image of this, but the burette is back here with a stopcock so we can control the flow of the sodium thiosulfate. And then we're going to have Neuerlenmeyer flask uh, to put our solution um, in. So those are kind of all of the uh, equipment and materials that we're going to need uh, to perform this section, which again is ideometric titration. All right, so just really quickly before we start, um, let me sort of introduce and go through the various steps. And these are all from our handout on titration that's on Canvas and, and other sites as well. So uh, we're gonna take our powder and we're gonna try to mass out roughly 50 milligrams. And we're gonna add that to an Erlenmeyer flask. Then uh, the first solution that we're gonna add is we're gonna add 10 milliliters of the potassium iodide uh, to that. And then we're gonna add the uh, acid, HCl, uh, 15 milliliters. And this will dissolve the, the powder. Um, and then afterwards, we're going to titrate against, which means we're going to use the burette full of sodium thiosulfate uh, to see how much we need to uh, basically titrate against the iodide in our solution. Um, and so that's what we're titrating with, the 0 0.03 normal or molar uh, sodium thiosulfate. Um, and so uh, once we've done that, at the end, um, it's going to get very faint in color. We're using color as an indicator here. So the starch is going to complex with the uh, copper 
uh, in the solution and turn it a deep color. Uh, and that's going to be our color indicator at the end of the ideometric titration. And so things that we are going to need um, through the titration is we need the mass of the powder that we use and we need the final and uh, initial volumes of thiosulfate so we can calculate how much thiosulfate uh, was used. And these will allow us to calculate uh, the amount of copper in our material, uh, which can be translated and give us an oxygen content. So the whole idea of this is that the copper oxidation state can be used as a way to measure the oxygen content of our YBCO because we know that the oxygen content um, greatly affects its superconducting properties. So that's what we're going to do uh, with this process. Uh, we're going to run one as an example, um, and then uh, we have a bunch of data uh, up on the share drive for you to analyze and calculate oxygen uh, contents for our samples. Uh, we are going to run three sets of, of each, um, and so you'll see uh, in the data uh, what those are. So there'll be lots of data for each group um, and their different powders, uh, trying to, again, find out how much oxygen content. All right, so I'm going to break here, and we're going to get reset up, and I'll walk you through those steps that we just talked about. All right, so the first step we're going to do is weigh out the uh, YDCO powder. So again, this is centered, and it's gone through uh, 325 mesh. Sit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a weigh paper on the scale, close it back up, and tear the balance. Got my powder here. The, this is a previous year, so it's not one of our samples. Um, and then I'm either going to go directly from the vial, um, or I'm going to use the, um, the spatula here if I need to have a little bit more control. Uh, but again, I'm targeting 50 milligrams, which would be 0.05 grams. So let's see if I get pretty close. So that's the amount I'm targeting is 0 0.05. Uh, but I don't have to be exactly 0 0.05. I just have to know exactly how much I have. So I'm going to call that, so we'll let it uh, get to uh, steady state here, and then we'll just go with what we have here. Alright, so it looks like it's 55.2 milligrams, or 0 .0552 grams, uh, hopefully you saw that on the scale. And so the next thing we're going to do, is we're going to take it out. And at this point, we want to transfer it to our Erlenmeyer flask. So I'm going to go grab that from the other side of the view hood. All right. So I've got an, a clean Erlenmeyer flask here. Uh, it's 125 milliliters, if you can see that. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to pour it in to that Erlenmeyer flask. So with this, we want to have exact amounts. We want to know exactly what we're dealing with. And so even if it doesn't look like there's anything on this way paper, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use water to just make sure to clean off every little bit that might be on there. Because if I say that there's 55.2 milligrams of YBCO, I want to make sure that that's the exact amount I have so that I know what the copper valence and the oxygen content of that amount is. So you really need to know how much you have, but it doesn't have to be exactly 50 milligrams. Okay, so we're set with that. 
we've got our powder in the bottom here that you might be able to see. And so now we're gonna move on to the next steps. All right, so the next step is to weigh out, or sorry, uh, get the volume of uh, potassium iodide I need. So again, this is the prepared uh, sample that uh, Nancy made for us. So I need 10 milligrams of potassium, of this 10% potassium iodide solution. And so I'm gonna use this uh, 10 milliliter beaker, and then I'm gonna add it to our uh, powder mixture. All right. All right, so if you're a little off, it's a little hard to pour from this thing. Um, so you can always use the transfer pipettes uh, and it, make sure if there's any uh, mess, then clean it up. So I'll clean this up as we're here. And I'll clean that up a little bit more after the video. Um, so I added a little too much. And so I'm going to uh, make sure I have the proper amount. So take some out with the transfer pipette and add it to a little waste container I have back here. And then making sure I'm level with the the beaker, uh, look for the line and get it to 10 milliliters. So I've uh, weighed that out. Uh, I'm happy with it being 10 milliliters. And so uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is add that to the solution. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add it. All right, set that back in the back away from everything. All right, so you can see here, um, maybe with my, that's not really showing it very well, but hopefully you can see that that's clear. Um, there's just, looks like there's a solution and you can see the remnants of our powder. So uh, nothing's, really nothing's really happened. We just have a little bit of water that we added, which is fine. And we have the potassium iodide. Uh, and so uh, nothing should have happened um, solution-wise here yet. Uh, we've just added Ki as a protectant, uh, essentially at this point. And so the next thing we're gonna do is we need to add the 15 milliliters of the HCl solution that we have here. Um, and we've already actually uh, weighed some out here, or sorry, uh, uh, used the beaker to get the volume right. Uh, it's a little too much but um, I've already got some here. So I'm gonna take out a little bit to get it to 15. I'm gonna use a fresh pipette for every part of this. And again, get level with the beaker so I can see. All right, that is, and then use these little waste beakers. And so, uh, so I've got, I've got the graduated cylinder here. Um, so I've got 15 milliliters. And now I'm gonna add this, and I'll see if I can get it closer to the uh, camera here so you can see. All right, so hopefully you can see that there is actually a physical uh, a color change here. It's kind of orange, maybe yellow. Um, there still might be a little bit of powder left at the bottom. And so you kind of want to swirl this around, but you can also use the glass stirring rod to kind of help you out in this. So I'm gonna stir it around, try to get rid of all this powder. And so the HCL is dissolving the YBCO. And the reason I do it in this order is because I wanna dissolve the HCL, but I don't wanna oxidize it. So I wanna dissolve it in the presence of that Ki so that the oxygen, or so the copper reacts with the uh, uh, I minus uh, in the way that, that we need to do to create H, uh, I2. Uh, if we don't do it with the Ki there, then the copper can actually oxidize uh, in the presence of the, uh, the acid. So I need to do it in that particular order. All right, I'm gonna try to get as much of that dissolved as I can. Some of it's kind of stuck to the bottom. Swirl around a little bit more. And the last thing I want to note here is that anytime you use anything like a, a glass stir rod like this, uh, at the end, 
use the water again and make sure you rinse off all that solution because we want to make sure that it stays in there and it's not uh, still on the glass rod. So kind of clean it into the, the beaker. So again, you can kind of see this uh, orange yellow color. Uh, this is typical of, of I2. So, um, so, so from this uh, part, we're gonna uh, pause the video for a second and get set up for the next step. All right, so for this next step, we need to get the burette ready to go. Uh, so right now it's empty. And so we need to add the sodium, sodium thiosulfate. Again, that was the 0 0.03 molar or normal sodium thiosulfate. Uh, so that's needed for the calculation. And you can see that uh, we already have, uh, you might not be able to see this, but there's a funnel at the top of the burette. Uh, it's a little hard to see with the lighting. So uh, there's a funnel at the top so I can pour some thiosulfate. And what I want to do is I just want to pour enough. So at least 10 milliliters, but uh, uh, more than that usually. So it holds 50 milliliters. And so I'm going to do at least 10 milliliters of thiosulfate into the burette. And I'm going to make sure it's closed. Otherwise, it's just going to go straight through. So right now it's closed. And so I'm going to go ahead and add that. And I might need to open up the fume hood for a second. It's going to be that way. All right. And get this back down. So at this point, uh, once I've pulled it up to the appropriate level, um, you can always uh, rinse a little bit through, make sure it's uh, going through, all right, so it opens fine. Uh, and then the first thing you'd want to do when you start this is you would want to note the volume at which you start with, right? So that number in itself isn't important, but the number that we add to the solution here that we have is going to be important. So we always take an initial reading of the volume and a final reading after we finish titrating. And that gives us our amount. So let me move this down a little bit now. All right, so we've got that all set up. I have at least 10 milliliters. Um, if you're doing this multiple times, you might want to just fill it up completely. Uh, but I've got enough in there. I've noted the initial volume. So I've, I, I write that down in my uh, lab notebook or in the, the uh, spreadsheet. And so at this point, I want to switch the waste container I have here, and I want to add my uh, solution. And I might even need to adjust the burette up or down. All right. So I have it moved slightly up. Uh, so for this uh, titration, I'm going to physically swirl it with my hand. Uh, but we also have. Uh, stir plates and stir rods, then we can do the same thing so you don't have to do it uh, like that. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to control the stopcock with my right hand and swirl with my left. And basically uh, it's a color change. So I'm looking for it to get lighter and lighter and eventually um, we're trying to get it to go clear. But before it gets to that point, when it's a very faint yellow color, we're going to stop and we're going to add our starch indicator. We're going to add a few drops of that to get a much more vibrant color change. And we have to wait until it's a very low concentration at that point. Um, so let me go ahead and get this reset up so that you can watch the uh, titration process a little bit more carefully. All right, so we've got the powder, we've got the KI, and we've got the acid, and we've got the powder dissolved. And again, you can note the color. And so we're ready to titrate. We've recorded the volume uh, initially of the thiosulfate on the burette, and we're going to use the stopcock to control the flow. So here I'm just going to kind of open it up and start a drip of sodium thiosulfate. All right. So hopefully you can see a little bit of a drip there. And so I want to be constantly stirring. So again, you can use a stir plate. I just like to do this by swirling. And if you're comfortable with it, you can get it to go a little faster. And it helps once you've done this a couple times. 
So what I'm looking for is it should continuously decrease in color, and when it gets a faint yellow, I'll show you, and we'll stop the titration process to add the indicator. So we need a really low concentration of I2. And so during this process, kind of note the color change, and you should note that it's changing and becoming much lighter. All right, so it's getting pretty close. Get that last little drop. So you can see it's very faint. So at this point, I'm going to add the starch indicator. So I just need probably one, two, three, four, five. Let's see what five looks like. And hopefully you can see that already. It's pretty, it should become kind of a purple color. Maybe we add a couple more. See if that helps. So it should become kind of a deep purple color. Um, also, it will depend on the concentration. So I might have let it get a little too far. So we'll go with that. And again, we're, this should be a very rapid change because it's sensitive, this complex with the starch, it's really sensitive to concentration. So when there isn't any left, it will become clear. And that's where we want to stop. And we'll note the final volume. So I'll start it up again. Uh, very, I think, very uh, slow drip, I think, is appropriate in this case. And you can see it's changing, and there it goes. So you can see very uh, clear solution that we have. It might be a little murky if there's some leftover powder in there, but for the most part, it's clear. Right? So we have a clear solution. All right, so at that point, uh, you're done with the titration, and so you're going to go back up here to the burette and kind of note where the final volume is. And you're going to write this in the notebook. And when you see the re these results in the Google Drive, uh, you're going to see an initial and a final volume. So the difference will give you how much thiosulfate was used in the titration. And you'll also be given the mass of the YBCO powder that was used in each titration because it's po impossible to get the same exact mass. So you'll notice differences in there. And these will all be used to calculate the oxygen content, which you can find the equations uh, in the handout. And there'll be another video going through those calculations and how to arrive at your uh, result there. So this was how to ca uh, do perform an ideometric titration for YBCO in our high temperature superconductor YBCO lab for MSC 407.